Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, oh happy days as the skies open and your comments fall down. What's up everybody, it's Zach from Switch First. I've got Jake and Gabe here. Some people said, why do you always say you got Jake and Gabe here? But I just don't want to take these two amazing gentlemen for granted. So welcome to the show, Jake and Gabe. Thanks for being here for Comment Force number 16. Thanks for it's having me. It's raining comments. You said that the comments were falling out of the sky, so I was scared for a second. It, well, Gabe, they probably will not rain in Texas. It's too hot for that. Very hot. Not, not, too not too hot for that. And this week was hot with a whole lot of your comments. Thanks, as always, for submitting your ideas, your discussions, your comments, your feedback. And I want to let everyone know that we are doing a dedicated E3 Comment Force bonus edition tomorrow, Sunday. Uh, that will be full of all your predictions. We will give our feedback and our uh, sort of if it's, if it's going to happen or not on all of those Sunday. So stay tuned for that. This one is focused on everything from the week. And we have a dedicated E3 discussion coming your way. But this is Comment Force number 16. And uh, did we have a good week? We, we had good. a great week. I had an amazing week. It was great. You had a very good week. Yes. It involves snipper clips. I had a very movie-filled week. I, I feel like I saw a lot of movies. Shh, Alien. They don't know about Movie Force yet. <laughs> movie Force. Film Force. <laughs> Film Force? <laughs> Popcorn Force? Corn Force? Here, stop divulging secrets. All right, let's get into the comments, and uh, Jake, let's have you start it off this week. Starting things off, we have Bulbasaur Life. Great name. I love the picture of six Bulbasaurs. It's, a, it's like the, the most epic Pokemon team ever, ever. But the comment is, please get a cat. It would be so cute. Also, I love the channel. Well, thank you for loving the channel. Uh, cats can be cute. They can also be very, very terrifying to me. Jake. And I've, I've always been a dog person up until recently. Like, I've seen some videos where cats doing interesting things. I'm like, a cat could be a chill pet. Like... I would like train it to just sit on my shoulder so we could just go out to the <laughs> movies together. It's a very small cat. No, or you have they, very they're very shoulders. they're very agile and good at fitting on things. Like, have you seen them fit into like tiny things so we could just like curl up on my shoulders and I'd be, I don't know, it'd be really cool. I think it stems from Jake. watching Nausicaa, Valley of the Wind, <laughs> and seeing her with her tiny little squirrel pet on her shoulder, and I was like, that'd be the most so you want a squirrel? Ever. No, no. Jake, Jake wants to be Sailor Moon and he wants a Luna. <laughs> oh god, and you guys are just making everything I say sound so bad. <laughs> I love this. What do you mean, bad? This sounds great. I have, have no, you guys seen the I video? say. I sent it to Gabe. It's a cat that's afraid of a wolfman mask. That was such a mean video. And the cat literally is going like, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, oh, look that one up. Cat is like scared of masks or something like that. Anyhow. All right. Hector, Hector Alcala isn't scared of anything. He says, uh, there is a glaring lack of toad in your channel's banner. Please fix. Thanks. Hey. That's never happening. Ever, Hector. Ever. Gabe is going to cosplay Toad at E3. I thought he was nope. doing Twintel. Uh, well, there's three days, so. <laughs> or is it, to is it Toad dressed as Twintel? <laughs> no, it's Toad, Twintel, and has been Gabe are his three outfits. Oh, okay. has, has been Gabe is my favorite. <laughs> and Jake, you're going to be Ninjaro without even trying, so that's set for you. Uh, we are looking at uh, adding some more Toad into the banner. That's not true. It's happening. Me and Jake are planning behind your back. My back is all over the place. It can't be behind it. Our new ba oh, new banner features Gabe, Twintel, and <laughs> Toad. Uh, Terrence Gabalion has the first comment uh, about games, saying, I'd love a Zelda puzzle maze dungeon sort of game based on collecting things with Link, controlled by moving your thumb, but the bottom of the screen is moving up, so you need to try not to get stuck but go quickly. I love this freaking idea. Do you guys ever play Pac-Man 256? Yeah. No, but this sounds like I love Run. that game so much. What? This sounds like Temple Run. No, but, but but it would be more like navigating Zelda dungeons and getting upgrades and defeating enemies and going super fast. High score chase. God, that would be but so But then you're, you're forced to go in addicting. one direction. Well, you can go left, right, and up. Or back. Yeah, Pac-Man 256, you can chasing. You can't really go to the left or the right. Pac-Man 256, you can. And it works beautifully. Just do Pac-Man 256. Pac-Man is such a simple Zelda. game compared to Zelda. No, play Pac-Man 256. If you haven't played that, that is one of the best mobile games available. Uh, I disagree with this idea, but okay. Well, tell tell us the next genius idea, Jake. It's mixed out with, or maxed out with a V as opposed to an A. Okay, the genius ideas keep coming to me. I feel that Zelda won't be a Hearthstone type game, but Nintendo should use the Smash Bros. name and make a card game with all the Smash characters, trophies, and items. Call it Smash Bros. Duel or something. I don't know. This is Bow it. down. Another brilliant idea. This sounds like something that Zach... Zach, did you just make this account and create this? <laughs> like, I want Nintendo characters everywhere, so put them all on cards and duel. Listen, 
Okay, a Smash Bros. card game, a dueling it's not Smash themed Bros. Enough. card game. It's not themed it's, enough. It's themed with Smash Bros., one of the greatest Nintendo themes out there. You know what? That's not a theme. Smash Bros. is it's just an like amalgamation of everything. I had a Smash Bros. birthday party. It's a theme. <laughs> <laughs> I love this idea. And tell us, tell us about your Smash Bros. birthday party. So, it was one of my most confused birthdays. <laughs> I'm, assuming, because... I'm assuming Jake was there. <laughs> yes. Uh, I wanted to do a... Uh, a little boys night so i had my two best friends over and the whole crux of this party was getting smash brothers melee for gamecube so i basically told my mom like for my birthday present it needs to be a smash bros melee otherwise this party is not gonna work and i felt really bad because i i always like surprises and i never like being like demanding so i kept like <laughs> i kept i kept reiterating please Please, I never like Bros. being demanding. Please get Smash Bros. Melee, and I wanted it, <laughs> and I needed it for this party. And luckily, my mom would deliver. But it was sort of weird because I basically like, I basically like dictated my my birthday plan. I don't know, it was weird. But yeah, I, I did have a beautiful say. night. You don't say. And we played SSX Tricky, and I Where rocked the, the night away in? with Elise. What? Where's the confusion? The confusion was that I felt personally conflicted of like demanding what I wanted for my birthday, but it had to happen because that was the crux of the party. Like, I told Um, my friends, like, we're going to play Smash Bros. all night. Anyhow. Gabe, Gabe, this is an important question for all of us. All right, JoJo Draw says, what do you guys call your fans? Switchers? Okay, Switchers is bad, but I'm sure y'all can figure something out. Uh, uh. (laughs) I think about this a lot because I don't know if we should just say, like, they're Switch Force because that works, or if they're Switch Forcers. You, I've heard you use Switch Forcers before. I don't, I don't really feel great about that. Switch Forcers. I, ha- I have like uh-uh. a small little tidbit, but I don't know if I can say it. Okay, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Never mind. Go. <laughs> okay. Switch right. for Switch Force also embodies the fans. Like we are the Switch Force. The Switch Force. Well, I mean, I thought we were the Switch Force. It's like a Triforce, and then yeah, but they just, can be the Switch Force too. They're just all right. If you guys have any this? fan, if you have any fan name suggestions or like group suggestions let us know if you like switch force that's cool too or you like switch forcers switchers sounds like nope. something far more devious no nope. no i um, i, I, I kind of i kind of like switch forcers a little bit i mean nope. a little bit i will leave the channel i like switch force just because it's like what's up switch force like yeah like everyone's part of it no, but no. i don't know if it needs to be we a separate to expand thing. Our triangle know. out then to invite all of them into the middle upside down triangle Zach, tell what us if what, we just, what if we just call them all. What's that middle triangle? <laughs> we already have all three triangles covered. No, the, the fourth, empty space in the middle of it. Oh, the, the we call them the fourth one. edge. What? How about the fourth edge? That's our secret fan club. The, the fourth, fourth edge. edge? Wait, what? Where'd the edge come from? Get, okay, look. There's Speaking three of, us. of fan clubs, on, there's three of us, and the triangles have three edges, so th- they are the fourth edge. Oh my Plus, God. it sounds edgy. <laughs> Anyhow, oh You're edgy. The, the Jake says. My name is Jake, so I'm automatically part of the Jake fan club. The Jakes will rule the world. And then Jake's fan club says, this guy gets it. And then Jake's fan club says, this is the original Jake's fan club. By the way, the fan club uh, inception has spiraled out of control. There were so many Jake's fan clubs and so many Zach's fan clubs in the comment section. I, I can't figure out who's who and who's the real and who's the wrong and who's the first and who's the last. As long as we know the original. That's basically know, how I feel about my life, though. Because, like, now, days, so many people are named Jake that I'm just like, am I me or are you me? No. But we know Gabe's uh, fan Don't club is... no to my comment. <laughs> no. We know that Gabe's fan club, uh, fan club is the originator around here, and you will forever have props for starting the civil war that we currently find ourselves in. Man, okay. Colin Cheat Them says, Hey, Switch Force. I'd love to hear... See, also, if we called the fans Switch Force, then when they wrote to, like, hey, Switch Force, then they'd also be writing to everybody, which would be a little bit confusing. Anyways. Or they could say, hey, the fourth edge. Coming at you from the fourth edge. (laughs) Hey, Switch Force. I'd love to hear your take on the pupils of the ARMS characters. Um, I I think... Wait, the pupils or just the iris? Because the pupil... Everybody has the same pupil. It's just a hole. Do they mean, like, the iris? Like, how, like, Min has, like, concentric green circles in her eyes and stuff like that? Is that what they're talking about? I guess they just want an eye review. I think they're. I think they're cool. It's kind of like an anime esque theme. Um, the question also comes to me: Are they wearing contacts? Like they're wearing masks, right? So are they wearing like contacts to look more fierce, or is that really how their eyes are all the time? I don't know. 
It's an interesting. Hey, can I ask for a little life advice here on this section? Now that you uh, mentioned, <laughs> are you going to ask if you should get color context, game? No, I want to get context. I, I, and whatever, I know y'all's take because I've talked to you guys about. Well, I talked to one of you. About Wait, it. Gabe, do you wear glasses? Oh my god! <laughs> hold, on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, oh god. hold on. I had this moment where I had this moment, Gabe. I was telling you it's about how I saw. Hold on, hold on. I had this moment Wait. where I said. Hold on! Where I saw cool Gabe in LA, and I was like, but he had glasses, because in my head, Gabe doesn't have glasses. But Gabe, wait, Gabe does have glasses, right? Zach, he has glasses. We have slept damn near in the same bed, not really in the okay, same you, bed together. You do but have glasses. Okay. Zach, we have. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know. You have knocked my glasses off while playing basketball against me. For some reason, I was feeling like you didn't have glasses, I and wish. that's why you were so different from cool Gabe. I hate that there's a cool game, but, but uh, I, I really want to get context, but uh, like my hand shakes so much, I'm afraid, I'm afraid I'm gonna poke my eye. I'm afraid I'm gonna like put dirt in my eye. I'm very well, scared. Gabe, there's a lot of there's a, well, the first way to fix the second problem is to wash, wash your hands. hands. Yeah. The, the other thing is a lot of people use context and don't like gouge their eyes out. So I think you. But okay. they they don't shake as much as I do. Well, my Gabe, then shakes. stop drinking so much coffee or something. I don't my, drink coffee. My girlfriend at all. has the exact same fear as you, and the reason she doesn't want context is because the idea of touching her eye and putting them yeah, in and messing freaky. it up is terrifying. Uh, but a good a good person for you to talk to is our mutual friend Trevor, because he had the same fear and somehow conquered it. So you should mm. uh, call him, beep him, reach him, and anyways, arms, get some advice. arms, people, uh, arms, eyeballs. Do you guys have any comments on them? Or just your I think own it's eyeballs? interesting that they're all kind of like these spirals, and I almost but wonder they're not, if they're like, like jacked. They're not all spirals. I think, well, like Springman, Ribbon Girl, Ninjara. Master Mummy. They have like the spirals? they have the rings around them. There's like in there's like rings inside like their th- yeah. And so I wonder if it's almost like maybe they have to take some special. Maybe Biff gives them like a special drink before they enter the arena, and it kind of makes them like all jazzed. Maybe or maybe it's just playing off of the spirally springy thing. I don't know. Mechanica doesn't have it, so maybe she's the only one. I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Well, Big Mo says, I think a Waluigi game would be cool as a Nintendo-friendly GTA-style game. I just think of running around an open world as Waluigi doing mischievous things. Heck, this could even be Nintendo shot at a slightly more mature title if they wanted. Like if you agree. Well, shouldn't have read that last part, but um, what do you guys really think about like, this? I concept? love this. I love I love the idea of this Waluigi game where he's going around the Mushroom King causing problems, and instead of like, oh, Mario, please save the princess. Like, he's kidnapping toads. He's going and busting down. Yeah, kidnap you know. all the toads, all of them. <laughs> he's just doing a lot of mischievous stuff. In terms of it becoming GTA, please, no. <laughs> obviously, please, that's not going to happen. no. God, no. But... I do think, like, an open-world Waluigi, like, activity-based or mission-based game would be super sweet. So I, I, I think, obviously, you're not going to do, like, the raunchiness or the nudity or the guns, but I think you could hey, do whoa, whoa, no, whoa, 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 There's president now for guns. Like, that's a thing that Nintendo has stand- Okay, but not, like, making, like, killing everyone in New Donk no, City. No, 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 of course not. <laughs> I, so I, I think, I still I like think there is Waluigi's Resort better, but that's just me. I still think there's space though for an open world Nintendo game, and maybe it's not for Mario. Breath of the but Wild. where you? <laughs> okay, but one that's like more in the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh, okay. I- I'm all for. Okay, it wouldn't be Grand Theft Auto. It would be like maybe like Mushroom Kingdom mischief. So like Waluigi MKM. Hmm. Interesting. I like. I-, I have I have no affinity for Waluigi in any way. So. Volusion back from uh, some of the early comment forces, says, when this channel gets extremely popular at one point in the Switch's life cycle, you guys need to have a booth devoted to a session of comment force during a convention. This would be a dream. A live well, comment force? Like a Q&A, but like, uh, just title it comment force? What, what a dream. This is what you dream can about? This be, can, it, can, this, can this be my dream? Can yeah. I have this one? Sure. <laughs> if you want it, I don't want it. I Imagine being at PAX 2019, 28, 2018. Let's wide the leg. <laughs> and, and we are just having a blast with all of the switch the fourth edge is there everyone is just <laughs> Zach that's not a thing dude I'm every, sorry every, all the fourth edge is there no, not the, the, the fourth the, edge it needs to be something different <laughs> the fourth <laughs> edge and we're just doing live comment for us and making giggles about Gabe's glasses and someone someone brings a whole bunch of little toads and is throwing them at Gabe and me and Jake are just chuckling it's it's god it's I hate dream. that these this are is fantasies. such a that's not even a comment for us I don't know what that is it's like daycare <laughs> 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, the, I'm gonna secretly run the fourth edge, and they are gonna do things that you guys exactly. won't that is not expect. what they're like called. Underground organization, like a yakuza underground that just doesn't <laughs> yeah, know what it's you, doing. You, you it sound is like the you sound like a re- edge. You sound like a rejected Ninja Turtle supervillain like group. Yeah, Listen. so I mean, like the, the fourth edge clan, they just don't do anything <laughs> right ever. It's gonna be good. All right, Mister okay. Richard C eight eight says. It's 10.30 p.m. on a Saturday, and I am sat here in rainy old England eating some Milky Bar giant buttons and listening to Comet Force. Life is great. I'm glad we could make your Milky Bar night even better. Yeah. just thought this was so swell. Yeah. And uh, just because I want you to see, um, I want you to know what this is. Uh, Milky bar, guys, giant bar. Yeah, because I don't because I don't know what a Milky bar button. Yeah, we'll is. post it. Some, whoever edits this has to post it, but I put it in Discord. These are Milky bar giant buttons. That doesn't even look edible. <laughs> they, they look almost like little. Those little look like something, something when you're like playing bingo, like you put it on the card to like signify that, that you, whatever <laughs> number they're called. <laughs> Anyhow, I just I just like that that, his, that we help make his life great, and it's just raining. He's just listening at Comment Force. This is such a pretty image, and he might be doing it again right now. You have some mm, strange nice. pretty images, Zach. Brody Shea from The Wire. Brody. Nobody knows what that is except me. Um, while I'm not a huge, while I'm not a huge fan of the rabbits, rabbits and their over the top quirkiness seems like it will get in the way of the less chaotic Mario and Friends. I am really excited to really see how this game is turning out to be. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was funny to me. That's a funny sense. I am really excited to really see how this game is turning out to be. He's like a little because it rhymes because he's you, a poet. You, okay. I'm glad that Nintendo is taking their opportunity to seek new possibilities. That even if this game is a bust, I'll still be happy to know that they gave something as odd as this a try. Even when they're giving peach lasers, does anyone else agree? I think... I don't, 100%. I, I don't know if I... like. There's other opportunities they could have taken. And I think that the rabbits might be a necessary evil to make this happen. But, yeah... Uh, it'll be interesting to see. I am definitely. I love that they are venturing outside the comfort zone, both in genre yeah. and in style and in attitude. And well, I think. Well, hold on, hold on. I want clarification on that. What do you mean by in style? That definitely looks like a Mario game. Yeah, but I mean like laser weapons and like this idea of like this whole squad of Mario characters running around together. Like that's not something that happens very often. Sure. Okay. Fair point. I mean, look at every other Mario game. Doing it now. right. I'm looking at them. Look at them all. <laughs> yep. I agree, and I'm glad that people are sort of becoming more and more receptive to the rabbit's idea rather than vomiting out of their nose. Well, that's how it started. So after you've vomited, you kind of just accept that you vomited and you feel better. Gotcha. Yeah, there's no cl- uh, that burn is going to be there whether you like it or not. Uh, Bob the Carrot Pink Sheep, what a name, says, I feel that all the characters in ARMS are very well balanced. I don't think that one character is significantly better or worse than the next or that tiers in the game will have very much significance. This is good in my opinion because since the roster in ARMS is so comparatively small to other fighting games such as Smash 4, there will be enough characters that will be a variety of competitive characters that people will choose. So any character could have a chance of winning. My main, I think, will be Bite and Bark. That dog is just so cute. Yes. I want to get you guys' take on I think that the, mo- the most this. balancing part of it is that any fighter can have any arm, um, and that you can have so many combinations of that. So I think that mm. levels the playing field. If it was how we originally thought with maybe each character has only those three set arms, um, then I feel like it might have been, there been, might have been more balancing issues and more tier um, definition. But, I mean, again, it's hard to even say anything on this because we haven't played every character, so we can't really just You haven't. But, okay. I have. Gabe, we as a collective have not played all, every character. Uh, okay. The fourth edge wants no, Gabe. Zach, do you feel stop that. All the that. Characters are, do you feel like all the characters are very well balanced? I, I so far do feel like the characters are very well balanced. I have played them all, but, you know, it has been in, in, in a limited, uh, um, you know, time. My, so my question man, also becomes... I, I'm super hyped for this test punch that's going to happen, like, in, in a mere amount of that hours. Are, that already happened? Yeah. Whoa, yes. Gabe, nope. what, 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 it was fun. <laughs> yeah, the, the test punch was really fun, huh? What uh, Jake gave it away with with us, uh, him saying that we haven't played them. So yeah. Uh. Well, my question though is: is it that the characters are so well balanced, or is it that they're not very different from each other? <laughs> no, they're very different. <laughs> that's a that's a good point. But no, I don't. I don't know. Anyways, we, me, we we did the the ability video. Me and Jake were talking about like, do the abilities really stand apart? And I think the the next comment kind of gives some more insight into that. Some do, Puma some Jarv do. says my input on that. You want to give your input right now? No, no, go ahead. Before Puma Jarv does? Or do you want to wait for Puma Jarv? 
I'll wait for Puma Jarv. All right, Puma Jarv says, My opinion on Twintel's ability is that I looked at it from a Pokemon ability, P-O-B. That's point of view. Some are better for a single battle, while some are better for double battles. Twintel could be a great partner because she can increase the window of counters that a team can optimize on. By hovering, she can stall more air movements, and with time stall, she can hold punches out longer while a teammate goes in with heavier gloves or a grab. Puma Jarv is thinking, thinking two steps ahead of us here. Yeah, I have a big question about this. Mm-hmm. If Twintel is playing a two-person, dub- like a doubles battle, do they slow down the punches from the view of the other player as well? Or is it just... To- or is it like a area of effect where it's just the the punches around Twintel slow down? That's what kind of I took it as. Like I don't, yeah, I, I, I don't think she. And I'm okay, okay, go ahead. I was gonna say uh, when we played the the two v two at the event and like somebody was using Twintel, I just wasn't paying like enough attention because it's so chaotic. Mm-hmm. Like I I I don't I I don't have a direct answer for you there, but I maybe. No, well, I mean, I, I, the way I, I took it, it as is it was more area effect, like the, the everything around her slows down, like in a bubble, not like the whole game slows down for Twintel's perspective. But I could be wrong. My hope is that the game is just so much more reliant on skill than it is on a specific character being better or worse. And yeah, the abilities obviously uh, can complement your play style and can complement your your actions. But that majority of this is on your decisions of when to punch, when to dash, how to punch, how to angle it, how to curve it, and that that is what sort of balances it is not this insane diversity of characters and their moves, but rather the diversity of the players themselves. Ooh. Meta. All right, Gabe. All right. So, Fabio Pamplona. Hope I said that right. Uh, I guess Gabby would love a rabid toad. No. Yes. No. This is a huge glaring omission from Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. It's no rabid toad. There. No, I don't think so. If there's a DK rabbit, possibly, there can be a toad rabbit, possibly. Uh, well, I just hope there's not a toad gun. Love. I hope there is a toad gun that fires small, <laughs> bite-sized toads that can crawl up no! Gabe's big back. It's my worst nightmare. My, my back's not big. Chill. Um, you said you told us it was I big. Said, no, I said it's everywhere. It's like omnip- uh, I was gonna say omnipotent. No, that's the wrong word. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> no toad, anything, please. Rabbit toad, yes. All Me right. and Jake vote for it. Uh, Con 007 says, Switch Force in German would be something like Switchcraft. I'm from Germany, by the way. I, I want to do Switchcraft! <laughs> from around the world, watch your videos. And we got a lot of people that said, like, oh, this would be Switch Force in Spanish, this would be Switch Force in French. And I just want to say thank you. That was very entertaining and awesome to read, and we appreciate it. And Switchcraft just sounds the funnest because it's, it's like witchcraft, basically. Hey, I'm getting ahead of you guys. I'm getting my gray hair going. You guys got to hurry up so we can do some Switchcraft. Oh, that would be uh, perfect. So if, you've any, if anyone out there is from somewhere... Uh, that wasn't mentioned. Uh, look, let us know. Look, like, if, I, I just got to be from like. I, I have I a video know. idea. I have a video idea. So when we're all together soon, uh, we'll all wear like witch wigs and we'll wear mm-hmm. like pointy hats and we'll have like a cauldron. We'll put a smoke machine in it and there'll be this, like this smoke coming out of it. And we'll have a camera overhead and it'll be like one of us like playing uh, um, arms or something like inside the cauldron. It's gonna be it need to be a very big cauldron for our arms to fit in there. But yes, that that would be a very cool video. I was doing switch. Okay, we're gonna Zach. We're gonna agree to this idea now, and then when Gabe shows up decked out as a witch, we're just gonna be normal and be like, "What are you doing?" I mean, Gabe, and you already have Photoshop fill as a technology his mouth. wizard, so. Okay, Gabe. What if we boil ketchup in the oh, cauldron? God. Move on, please. <laughs> All right. So we got Ben Wicket here, and he nope. says, "Winnick, Winnick, Winnick." What did I say? You said Wicket. Oh, I'm say sorry, no. Ben Winnick. You walk. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite nintendo memory relates to the original mario party on the n64 <clears throat> i got the game i got that game in fifth grade and i liked it so much that i made my own mario themed board game out of paper it, i called it mario star quest just like in mario party you went around the board collecting coins and landing on special spaces the object of the game was to get enough coins to buy a star at the end of the board i was especially proud of the casino spaces where you could bet coins and flip a special coin with toad on one side yes and bowser on the other if you landed on toad you won the coins you had bet and if you landed on bowser you lost them i brought the game to school and played it during recess and whenever i had a play date i insisted that we play the game that is ingenious that is better than zach's pac-man 265 or whatever the heck he was talking about i like mario star quest better Listen, I did this when I was little. I made board games. Me and Ben are best buds. I think that there was a time that me and my dad actually made a Mario board game. I there was, wrong. absolutely. No, that's 100% accurate. Yeah. Probably was not as good as Mario Star Quest. 
because his it seems very well thought better. out. No, I'm just kidding. This is I love drawing spaces and making like I mean they were more like Candyland style versus like some complex you know European game, but. I love making board games and like, okay, if you go here and if you roll a four, then you get uh, two uh, two blue toads. But yes, it's easy I, to make uh, board games. It's hard to make like complex strategy games. I tried to make one when my little brother got into Star Wars. I don't know why he was into Star Wars, but, and I made like all these cards that have like unique abilities and it's sort of like a chess type game. And then like, I thought it worked really well. And then I started playing it and it just like was not balanced or working right at all. So it's very difficult to actually make like a complex game. Phenomenal uh, story and phenomenal comment, though. The Switch Force uh, board game is coming. In the meantime, Grace and Brandon. The fourth edge. You guys no, just all uh, Grace and Brandon. so many things to our viewers. It's unreal. Uh, Grace and Brandon says, I didn't realize that I enjoy Switch Force so much that I that it would keep my attention for so long, but I have been pleased and surprised. I've been here since just after the first Nintendo Switch Direct in January, so keep up the good work, guys. Well, thank you. Thank you, Grace and just Brandon. Just a nice little note. Yeah. They say never trust a man with two names, two first names, but you seem very trustworthy, especially with your bow tie. Kal-El Hicks, uh, this is the Southern Superman, says, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite Nintendo memory was the era of my life that Pokemon helped me through. I had severe asthma when I was a kid, so I had to do breathing treatments via a nebulizer. So whenever I had to do a treatment, which was a common occurrence, I just put on the nebulizer mask and play Pokemon. I was only about four or five at the time, and I wasn't that good at Pokemon, but just playing through the various games of yellow, blue, and silver helped me through those grueling, breathing treatments. It was the foundation of my love for Nintendo, and I really hope they announce stars for Switch at E3. I like what? this a lot. I just, I just love that Nintendo helped him out, and it's carried him forth to now watching Switch Force and being excited for a new Pokemon in E3. I, I, I love reading stories where it's like you see the origins of the lifelong Nintendo love. So thanks, Southern Superman. Stop calling him that. Please take care of Gabe down in Texas. I don't know if it's him. Maybe it's a girl. Stop Thank calling you. this person that. Anyways. Thank you, Entity of the South. JY Gaming, guys. That's a good rhyme. Says, <laughs> since a great number of classic video game franchises came back on the Switch, such as Bomberman, Blaster Master, and Street Fighter, Mega Man would be a great addition to that group. What do you think? And he clearly loves Mega Man because his picture is a dude that's dressed up like Mega Man. And I think a Mega Man game on uh, Switch would be great. Even if it's not like a full release, even if it's like an eShop game, I think it'd be great. Yeah, well, the, the one issue, eh, damn near the only issue, is uh, the lack of a real uh, D-pad with the Joy-Con. But, you know, you can use a Pro Controller if you have that. I think that would be fantastic. I mean, I use, it's not really the same, but like I played through Spectre Knight with the button D-pad and it was fine. Yeah. I think Mega Man would be awesome, whether it is just a Legacy Collection. I know they're working on Legacy Collection 2. That, um, that has to come to Switch, right? It, yeah, yeah, I would think. Or a brand new one, you know, I think it would be cool. Like an eShop exclusive, a DLC, uh, like 11 would be really fun. Just some virtual console stuff even. Just me having Mega Man on Switch in general, I think. Uh, it, it's definitely happening. I would like it to be new, though. Mm, I like the old ones, too, so I don't mind. I would like them, you know how they did uh, 9 and 10 in the vein of the 8-bit. I would love them to do uh, an 11 in the vein of Mega Man X. That could be very, very cool. All righty. Dirk Schneider says, The expression pie in the sky means the empty promise of a future reward. The term was coined by a Swedish-American folk singer, Joe Hill, and was about how poor workers were encouraged the work uh, to work hard with the insurance that they would be rewarded in heaven. Oh, Okay. That makes sense. I'm assuming a lot of people, some, yeah, a lot research. of people knew this and told us about Joe Hill's uh, song. Yeah, so. I, I don't, I, I don't know who Joe Hill is. So, thank you guys for enlightening us. We're enlightening me because I was the one that was more curious about this. I'm thinking. I, I want to go backwards. One comment, real quick. Uh, do you think that Mega Man is a character that has relevancy to make a new entry, like a new style? No shot. Like this isn't like a cheap shot at all. But if Sonic does, so does Mega Man. Like, Mega Man games, like, ha are are so much better re regarded, like, in general. So, if Sonic... Well, I just feel like... Yeah, I just feel like, you know, Mighty Number no. 9 was such a that, that, that disaster. Was a bad, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I would love to see Mega Man himself come back and, like, yeah, yeah, do it Sonic right got, for 2017. Yeah, so Sonic has never had a disaster. I'm just saying. Like, one... Gabriel. Like, I'm just saying one bad We're game... We're put you like, back in your box. No, no, no. I'm just yes, saying that, are. like, one bad game and, like... It, it, and Mighty Number no. Nine isn't a Mega Man game, so we don't no. Can... I'm I'm saying I'm 
you're, you're misunderstanding. I'm saying because of that, I feel like Mega Man should come and do it right because oh. that was so... I thought you were saying like, hey, no, Mighty no, Number 9 Man. wasn't good, so maybe Mega Man no, was more... No, I'm oh, saying oh, we, okay. we were so excited to have something new, and that was such a bust that I'd love to see Mega Man himself come back, and I don't know what kind of game it would be. I don't know that it needs to be a side-scroller. Obviously, you know, uh, the, the sort of like 9 and 10 were really great and really fun, but I'd love to see them almost... How can Mega Man fit into 2017 that's not a side-scroller? Zach like, would it be an, an open world game? Yeah, would I was about be... to say Zach wants an open world Mega Man game. That's what he's saying. You know, I, could there be a way to utilize I want, some of the I platforming elements? Mega Man. I don't well, want Mega, Mega Man, Man Legend 64. was a thing, but but that didn't do very well. So it didn't. But at the same time, they converted Metroid well. Once once they f- found the way, it, it worked super well, Zach, and now we're very excited for. A haven't Metroid. they done like a first person shooter Mega Man game like on 360 and PS3? You remember that? No, that was Bomberman. That was Bomberman, not Mega Man. Sorry. I'm just I'm just wondering if or maybe it's a, a Mega Man You guys ever play Mega Man Soccer? No. Yes. Like once. It's like, that's a really good that's a really cool game. Okay. Anyways. Mega Man Legends is yeah, okay. I'm just I really want Mega Man to, to have like a Okay, now we need a Mega Man Mario crossover and they can work together to purge Nope, now we need the next the, comment, the, Zachary. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know you were super into Mega Man like this. I don't know why you <laughs> keep going on about it. <laughs> YGSR says, nice. Switch is pretty much confirmed to be a big hit. Let's see. It has already sold 3 million systems, and it will sell maybe 1 or 2 million more with ARMS and Splatoon 2. This will give it another million or two. And then we have Super Mario Odyssey at the holidays, so that will be another few millions. I actually don't doubt that the Switch will surpass Wii U sales in one year. Now, I don't know if it's going to go that far, yeah. uh, but I think that we've seen some some reports that it's ahead of Wii U. Um by what was it, ten percent? No, ahead of, of of Wii. Oh, ahead of Wii by ten percent. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so it is making great gains. Um, and I think as gym. is it gets, <laughs> as it gets more and more uh, really desired titles, I feel like it can skyrocket because the system is so well done. And well, it, it would have skyrocketed already. Like there are still shortages. That's still a thing. So true. So do do you guys feel that? I think maybe a more interesting thing. Do you think that this, the Switch is going to see a big summer boost from Arms Platoon 2, or do you think it's going to have to wait till fall to really see another skyrocket, I, per se? Well, again, I don't think we see any skyrockets until Nintendo starts to fill the demand that, that that's out there a little bit. Um, like, and, and I guess my concern with that is, like, at some point, do people, like, stop caring? Like, okay, like, I really wanted one, but, like, hey, they were never in stock. Whatever, I'll just go get a PlayStation instead, something like that. Like, that's mm-hmm. my only worry with, with the route Nintendo's taking. And, like, I mean, there was that report, like, a while back that they doubled up uh, production. So uh, maybe we start seeing the, the fruits of that labor um, start to come, and uh, maybe they'll be more ready, uh, readily available at retail. But at least for now, like, the, the Switch that are available are, like, $500 bundles that, like, not everybody, like, is trying to get so yeah and i don't think yeah. arms is going to give it a boost maybe splatoon 2 but my question is, is are the people who are waiting or wanting splatoon 2 different from the people who wanted breath of the wild and like who already have a switch but either way switch will be doing well throughout nonetheless the year. i think it's i think it's super good and i think the next uh the next comment is gonna continue to help those sales numbers rise the comment is purely itself <laughs> yes rm80s says, yeah, boy, my prayers have been answered. I clicked so hard on this video that I think I broke my finger. That's and really devastating. Context, this was on the Monster Hunter Double Cross video. That is oh, a okay. Very... Not, wait, n- are you sure you're not talking about Monster Hunter XX or Monster Hunter 20? <laughs> I am very confident, Gabe. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. For, for those of you that saw that video, I hadn't seen the actual image. I recorded the audio prior, so, you know, eh, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll take the blame. I'm just next, time Gabe, like next time Gabe will look at the... <laughs> Next time, Gabe will look at the image before he makes the video. <laughs> uh, no, but, like, the, the enthusiasm and the hype for Monster Hunter was incredible. Like, so many just, like, shrieks and yells in the comments. Like, just things like this. Like, yeah, boy, or, like, yes, 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 or, like, God has answered my prayers. Like, there I is I definitely a big love. Oh, yeah. Did, it's a did huge you know thing. it was so ravenous? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially from a handheld standpoint, and being able to bring this everywhere and dock it is, it, it's big. Okay. Very big. But yes, thank you, Jake, for caring about his uh, his health. Yeah, I'm the the, right. the the real one. I care about what Jose Ramirez is saying. He says, "All hell, Biff! I want to see his legs for some odd reason." Do you guys think we will ever see Biff's legs? Yeah, you and already then, can. 
And then uh, the Potato Assassin, Gamer of Gaming, great name, says, uh, Jose Ramirez, watch him be super tall. <laughs> no, he's really short. That's like thinking of, like, Biff being, like, towering over. Like, we just picture this little guy in this little, like, announcer's booth, but what if he's really, like, 20 feet tall, like, looking down at all the puny arms fighters? But yeah. you can see him. You can see his whole body in the arms Twitter. When he gets his Ribbon Girl autograph, he's... Yeah, he's... Oh, yeah, that's he, right. He's, yeah, like, he's half not the size of her. Well, yeah. really tiny. I'm just going to imagine that his legs are folded up. Okay. Well, you can you can imagine. <laughs> All right. That. Here, 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 here is a project for the the fourth edge, guys. Zach, give some, stop Give that. us some super tall Biff fan art. Stop make that. make some fan art with Biff towering over Gabe. No. Fourth edge mission complete. <laughs> we haven't done anything. <laughs> uh, Bring Koichi, us home. Ko- Koichi Echoes Act Three says honestly. If anyone says Twintel is way better than Min Min, they deserve no respect. Pathetic bandwagoners, Min Min for the win win. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's great. I love that. <laughs> there is a, a clear clash developing between the Min Miners and the Twintellers. Well, I saw like a, a NeoGAF poll that was like, um, who's your favorite arms character? And like everybody was like in like the, the, the double digits. And then Min Min was like 330 something and Twintel was like 427. So like. Kind of close, but yeah. Every time I play as Min Min and I win, I'm just gonna look at my opponent, or well, if I'm if they're I'm playing local, and just say Min Min for the win win. Well, why, it, why don't you put a camera of yourself in their house before <laughs> the fight begins, and then okay. you can look at them and say uh, it. Okay, that sounds good. I'll call them Jake, up on the phone and say, Jake. I have Min a feeling Min that for the win win. I have a feeling that you and I are gonna have a rivalry when it comes to arms. I'm gonna develop this rivalry. I am. I'm you should make purposely sure. make one. <laughs> yeah. Gabe is just desperate G- Gabe for a rivalry. Gabe as and Jake as Min Min. Yeah. Is that the I'm rivalry. Gonna, yeah. I'm gonna be Twintel. You're gonna be Min Min, and and I'm gonna need to come up with some cool hashtag uh, for your lose. Um. I can't, Min Min for the. Mm, nope. Mm. You can't do anything because Min Min's the best. All right. Last comment right. of the day comes from Moltaba Mortada. And they say, fanboys be like, Zelda Breath of the Wild clone. And then LSU. This is about rhyme. What? I disagree. It's, it's not a Breath of the Wild clone. And Lasu or Lou or Cyndaquil. LSU Cyndaquil. Cyndaquil says, yeah, my friend who loves Breath of the Wild says that it looks like Abzu and Breath of the Wild had a child. That is more apt. No, I feel like if it was if uh, The Witness and Breath of the Wild had a child. Mm. Just like visually, it kind of looks like The Witness to me. I don't know. If Jonathan Blow wasn't trying to explode your mind. Yeah. Keep I actually mind. like Rhyme. I'm, I'm sad that it doesn't seem like there's a, a lot of love for it or a lot of hype around it. But I actually think it's kind of a cool game. Yeah, I like what I played. All right, everybody. Uh, fourth Edge, you know your mission. And Stop I'm so that. glad that we made this surprise development out of nowhere today. Stop oh, calling a, them that. It's, it's brilliant. Anyhow, guys and girls. That is Comet Force number 16. Has been Gabe, Wannabe Jake, and your fourth what? edge leader, Zach, is here. What the heck fantasy world are you living in? <laughs> yeah, th- 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 this is like, um, do you guys remember, like, far. we need to stop this. Do you guys remember, like, in the cartoons where they would have, like, an like, uh, episode that was set, like, in an alternate reality where, like, someone's having a dream? This is basically that for Zach. Like, this isn't even real. Zach is having a dream. This episode doesn't really exist. If you meet us at E3 or any future convention, hold up four fingers so we know you're legit. <laughs> you're crazy. The fourth edge will return <laughs> next week. Tomorrow, though, we have an E3 comment for us, so that'll be fun. I hope to see the fourth edge there. (laughs) And until then, guys and girls, thank you so much for all of your comments, your feedback. We really appreciate all the community action. Love you guys so much. And E3 is close, so there's going to be a lot of good stuff heading your way. Keep those comments coming. Keep your ideas coming. Keep your thoughts coming. And E3 comment for us tomorrow for myself, Jake, Gabe, the Switch Forcers, the Switch Force, and the fourth edge. Thanks again for watching. Switch Force. Out.